Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been quite some time since we've done a speed reviews on this channel. So that is what I have for you guys today. I have makeup, skincare, and fragrance products that have come into my life over the last couple of months or so. Like some of these are like, okay. Honestly, some of the skincare has been in maybe even the last like five to six months, but I just recently started testing it um, in like December. So I have quite a number of products sitting in front of me. If you're interested in my thoughts and review, stay tuned first if you have yet to so subscribe to my channel and you like project painting content, palette themed content, or just chit chatting about makeup, I'd love for you to consider subscribing before moving on. And other than that, let's jump into the video. All right guys, before we get started, I wanna know the newest makeup favorite to your collection and the newest product that you're considering decluttering let a girl know in the comments below okay it is like i actually think warm outside but i'm freezing inside so i'm sorry that we're just in my like very puffy sweatshirt okay i think maybe we will start with fragrance first let's start with fragrance first because i'm super excited to talk about all three of these so dossier sent over three of their fragrances and i have two right here there's one that i still um haven't gotten around to testing just because i feel like seasonally it's going to make more sense in the spring summer but i am truly obsessed with both of these so up first we have woody chestnut which is supposed to be inspired by my favorite fragrance of all time which is replica by the fireside and i feel like this smells so similar but this one even has almost a little bit more woodsiness to it which i love a woodsy masculine earthy sort of scent so this in my opinion is so good and it comes in at such an affordable cost especially when considering like fragrance i believe this is 49 dollars. so i think actually going forward oh it's so hard to say because i do just love also owning replica by the fireside but i, I definitely will repurchase this one when i finish it absolutely a favorite fragrance of mine and then i also and then they also sent over floral marshmallow which is inspired by i think it's killian don't be shy and i mentioned when i first like unboxed these that i wore killian don't be shy to a birthday event last year and it literally brought me right back to that birthday event so i feel like the dupe is good or the inspiration is good if it's like if the if the scent is bringing me like a scent memory tied to the scent it was inspired by this one is one that i really enjoy wearing in like the spring and summer months there's something about this mixed with like a little bit of like heat that i feel like just completes this scent profile so i'm very excited to continue to reach for that this is one i 100 will repurchase when i finish as well because i don't want to spend 200 plus dollars on the killian bottle and i am just as happy if not happier with this than the killian don't be shy and then the other fragrance I have to review is the newest from Fleur. It's Strawberry Letter. And I got the like travel size. And if you can see, I've made quite a dent in this one. When I first smelled this, the instant like scent, like the instant hit of the scent memory, and I don't even know if memories, but when I initially smelled it, I literally thought I was walking by a lush. That is what it smelled like in my opinion. And it has this like light, flirty, fruity, strawberry sort of scent. When I purchased this, I thought maybe it would be like a deeper sensual sort of fragrance, but this to me is more like daytime, flirty fun, or I actually really enjoy wearing this to bed and not like to bed with someone else, but like just to bed. It has this really like light, powdery, fruity sort of feel to it that just like, honestly i feel like helps relax me i do love to wear like my lavender scents to bed but i've been enjoying reaching for this i don't know what it is about the fragrance um i will when i first started using this i was like i'm not gonna repurchase this but i literally have been so excited to get out of my bath every night to like put this on and then go lay down and read there there's something about it so i think i think i actually might buy this in a full-size bottle it's not my favorite fragrance of all time, but I do really enjoy it. Okay, and then we can talk about this body lotion before we get into skincare. This is from Sol de Janeiro. It is their Delica, Del, Delica, Delica. 
Delicia Drench Body Butter. Um, and I just got the mini to start. So this is supposed to be, I think, ultra rich and hydrating. And I would agree. I really enjoy this. I live in Minnesota, so I have really, really dry skin. I also drink like two Alani's a day, which is like 400 milligrams of caffeine. And then sometimes I also have coffee. So like, I need to be drinking more water and less caffeine. But I'm always like a dry, scaly lizard. <laughs> like I swear I put like leggings on and like flakes of skin are like, bursting into the air that's so disgusting to say but what i'm trying to get at is i'm a dry bitch <laughs> so this has been really nice i have so many other body butters that i kind of like cycle through but i do kind of want to use this up um this last the last couple of like really cold months here and then this is something i definitely will be repurchasing in the fall of this year because it definitely gives like fall winter vibes like when i'm at my driest and also the scent profile of this just smells more winter to me. I really do like the scent of this body butter. And I know they now have a body mist as well, which I'm interested in picking up, but I'm a huge fan of that as well. Okay, let's jump into skincare next. I found some absolute winners in skincare. And I promise you guys, not every single product that I am reviewing today is like an absolute hit. But I purchased a bit ago the Peach and Lily um, like discovery kit. And I am so impressed. I, first of all, the Peach and Lily like melt cleanser is my favorite first step cleansing oil I have ever found. In fact, I just actually went and repurchased that yesterday. But I finally got around to testing the some of their other products and I've been so impressed with this. So I use these in conjunction with one another every single night. I have the Wild Dew Essence and I feel like this just adds moisture to my skin that my skin just loves and eats right up. And then I go right in with the Glass Skin Refining Serum after. And honestly, I should wear this in the morning or if I'm like going to run errands and I'm not gonna be putting makeup on my face, I should wear this combo together because I truly do feel like it gives this just hydrated glass skin effect to my face and I am all here for it. And then at night, I also have really been enjoying the Matcha Pudding Antioxidant Cream. So first of all, this is green, which I love. And I also love matcha. <laughs> um, this is really... This is really hydrating. I feel like if you have oily skin, you may find this a little too rich. And I definitely prefer this at night rather than like my morning moisturizer. But this is something I definitely would consider purchasing again in the future as well. Especially because I love my Tatcha Dewy skin cream, but it's so expensive. And while this is still coming in at a higher price point, it is less expensive than the Tatcha. And I honestly feel like this might be even a little bit more hydrating. So maybe this could be my nighttime winter moisturizer and then Tatcha Dewy skin could be like my spring, summer. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Huge fan of Peach and Lily. Every product that I've tried from them, I've really enjoyed. And actually this is more of a makeup product, but because we're talking about Peach and Lily, I could just cover this right now. This is their Glass Skin Veil Mist, the Hydrate and Glow Mist. I don't really use this in my skincare routine per se, but I do kind of use this as a skin prep mist before doing my makeup. And I also use it like in the middle of my makeup steps just to kind of hydrate and melt everything in. In fact, I'm just kind of feeling like, uh, I just like, again, it's probably because I'm so dry. I love to mist my face and there's just something about mist on my face that I really <laughs> enjoy. Um, I do feel like this gives like a hydrated veil to the cheeks. It's not like it's going to last all day, but I also really like the mist on this. And this is a really nice heavy duty bottle. I think full price, this is in like the 40, like the mid 40 range. I don't think I could see myself repurchasing this at full price, but I did get this during the Ulta 21 days of beauty for half off. And I definitely would purchase it half off again. Okay. Back to skincare. I have, oh, I have peach and Lily sister brand. I did just want to talk about this really quick. So I feel like this has made such a difference in my skin in terms of redness. I've been dealing with a lot of redness on my cheeks and chin specifically, and I've been using the peach slices redness relief azelaic 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 acid serum about two times a week and i feel like this has made a huge difference just in my skin being less red maybe less inflamed and i just feel like this does something special for my skin so i wanted to shout that out as well 
And then the final two skincare products to talk about. So in my Beautylish Lucky Bag, I received the Charlotte's Magic Cream Light. It's a lightweight miracle moisturizer. And I've mostly used this in the morning for a morning time moisturizer. And this is nice, but I definitely do not think that this is worth $100. And there are so many other moisturizers I would... I would spend more money for it than this. I mean, this I think is better, although I don't use these in the same capacity because this is supposed to be much more hydrating. But in the morning, I really like, like I like the Tula Hydrating Moisturizer. I think that one's really good. I also like Clinique Moisture Surge. There's so many moisturizers that I really like a lot more than I do this one. This one also almost gives like, there is something about this that is giving me like, like this scent reminds me of like a hotel hand lotion i don't know why and not the actual like feeling of the <laughs> of the moisturizer i think it's nicer than a hotel body lotion but the scent is just like bringing me to like I don't want to say a best western but like a best western <laughs> okay and then from naturium i also purchased the dew glow moisturizer with spf 50 i feel like i've heard really really good things about this and again i live in minnesota so in terms of like testing the spf i haven't really had the best chance to do that but in terms of hydrating moisturizer i really like this so when we reach the spring summer months i could see this transitioning into like my everyday morning moisturizer it is a little bit thicker but I do understand that. So I just like to apply this maybe like 10 to 15 minutes before I plan to go on my face with makeup, which works fine for me because usually I do my eyeshadow first. I do have until 2025 that this expires. So I'd love to get through this this summer. I also just recently repurchased my Tula SPF which I reach for a lot in the summer. So I'm not 100% certain if this will be like a repurchase, but as of right now, I'm really enjoying it. We'll just see how I like it when I'm using it more for the SPS, SPF aspects rather than just a moisturizer. Okay, and then I have, we're moving into like makeup, but this could be like a hybrid between makeup and skincare. So from Sigma, I have their Hydra Melt Lip Mask. This has hyaluronic acid, vitamin E, jojoba oil, and shea butter. This is so such a nice lip mask you guys my daughter also uses this and she has chronically dry lips and she feels like this makes such a big difference i will say this might be one of the like most moisturizing lip masks i've ever used it is quite thick it is definitely like a nighttime lip mask or if i like am not running right out the door like i'll put this on as i'm applying my makeup but it's thick but it's also moisturizing. And I am someone who definitely needs all the moisture she can get in her lips as well. So I am a huge fan of this one. This is something I absolutely will repurchase when finishing. I just realized I also have the newest Laneige lip sleeping mask, which I can quickly give a review on. It's the cotton candy version. So cute, so fun. It's been a little bit since I've used the Laneige lip sleeping mask and I do really enjoy it. Mixed together, the blue and pink kind of show up like purple on the lips and this is not something i'm wearing out like as an actual lip product i'm either using it like when i'm editing videos it's this is usually sitting at my desk so i haven't really been using this at night although i do love it as a night sleeping mask but this one is just more hydrating for me currently so i've been using this and this is my desk lip mask and it's nice it's very hydrating i have no complaints or qualms to say about this product yeah it's not my tippity top favorite like this is definitely more hydrating and more moisturizing but if they release fun like shades or fun expansions in their line i will purchase and then the final lip mask i have to review is the lawless forget the filler overnight lip plumping mask okay this is a really interesting product because I wasn't certain when I first put this on if this would be like lip plumping and I was a little bit nervous and what I will say about this product is it does have that menthol kind of like tingling sensation that a lip plumping mask does and so when I started to feel that I was like okay why am I putting on like a lip plumper before bed because typically lip plumpers dry my lips out this is the most like sensational product in my opinion because it makes my lips look plump but it also hydrates my lips so this is not necessarily something i'm wearing as like an overnight sleeping mask personally but i like to use this as like in my daily routine like a, a lip product almost like a lip 
gloss um, especially if I'm feeling like my lips are extra dry but I want like a plumping effect I'll reach for this I think this is a phenomenal product really I don't know if it's innovative but I find it to be innovative like I never thought a plumping product could also feel moisturizing on the lips but Lawless has done it and we all know how much I love Lawless forget the fill or anything so I'm a huge fan of this and then speaking of Lawless they sent over a PR package with this product and a couple other things and in that PR package was their um, balm stick which I was really excited to give a try to because I have had my eye on these balm sticks for over a year I was really wanting to purchase at least one shade during the spring Sephora VIB sale last year but talked myself out of it and what I will say about the balm sticks is I think they're my least favorite product in the line but I don't dislike them I find them to be the least hydrating, the least like glossier plumping, but they're still nice if you want just like, like if I'm at work, I bring this to work and if I just want to like add a little bit of something to my lips, maybe a little bit of a tint, I'll just run this over my lips. And I do like it for that. This is not something I personally can see myself going out to purchase and especially spending like $26 on this lip balm. I don't feel like it's worth the 26. I would steer you in the direction of a lawless forget the filler personally. And also I know that they have um, different shades within their range, but this is something I would think could potentially have the ability to like get outside your lip lines and get a little bit messy. So not my personal favorite in the line, but I will absolutely use the product. And then speaking of lips, I have actually quite a few more lip products to review. So Merit sent over their newest lipstick formula, and it is a, I forget what they call it. It's the, it's their matte formula. And I picked the shade Sunday, which is this pink shade. I kind of wish I went with a different shade, but I wanted to do something that wasn't like every other shade within my lipstick collection. And I have been a big fan of the Merit lipstick formulas specifically. So I was interested to see what their matte formula would, would feel like on the lips. And what I will say is to me, this is more of a satin matte formula, which is something that I personally prefer. I don't like a super matte, super drying lip product. I love a glossy lip. So honestly, to even get me to reach for a lipstick takes a lot of effort. And I like this because it's comfortable. I don't find that it escapes my lip lines, but it's not like the most matte lip product of all time. So if you're someone who prefers more of like a satin matte finish, I think you would really enjoy these ones from Merit. I also like the other merit lip product formula i like i said i think merit makes a good lipstick formula and a, a lip product i don't necessarily love from merit is their lip oils to begin i just hate the packaging of these like this is the doe foot we have to apply this product to our lips like this is so small this is you know, i'm getting into bed with this and i'm getting right back out because this is not big enough okay now i will say this specific formula is the shade slick gelée and i prefer the gelée lip oil formula to the original the original lip oil formula i actually found dried my lips out rather than hydrated them the gelée formula i actually do feel like looks really beautiful on the lips looks more like a lip oil feels like a lip oil it's thin um, but it does have like a nice comfort to it and i do feel like it hydrates uh, but I would not purchase I would not spend $24 on this personally. So when I finish I wouldn't repurchase I did end up picking up another naturium phyto glow lip balm because my packaging was faulty in my other lip balm So I have the shade. I think it's Camilla. I'm not sure which without faulty packaging I actually really really enjoy this lip balm. I really want their like nude collection, but I need to finish more lip products before I bring in like four more lip balms. <laughs> this is really nice and, com and comfortable on the lips. It's a little bit, it's a little bit sticky, but not in like an annoyingly sticky way. Um, it's not something I feel like like my hair is getting stuck in and not something that I feel like I constantly have to be going like this to, but it does have a little bit of a stick to it. Um, I think that their packaging is really unique. There is something about like the a little bit more wide applicator that i really like and i will purchase more of these especially i really do want like the deeper brown sort of shades i'm loving like a brown lip not that i've been wearing a brown lip a lot but like that's the vibe i'm wanting 
And then I did finally get around to trying the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm, and I think this is a really nice product. I do find sometimes when I'm putting it on for the first time, my lip burns a little bit, and I don't know if that's just saying something about like how dry my lips are, but I did want to note that, but it goes away very quickly, and then as I reapply, I don't notice the same thing. I just have mine in the shade Vanilla Beige. Definitely a product that I will purchase more shades of, um, but also don't need to be running out to purchase like every lip butter balm when they're like $24, and I have a really large lip product collection, but if you are looking for a great, really comfortable, hydrating kind of hybrid between like a lip gloss and a lip balm. I would highly recommend this, especially for like a great product on the go. I like this, I'm a fan. The last lip product I have to review are the Effort are the Effortless Lipsticks from Ravy Beauty. I have all three shades and these I really, really, really enjoy. They are a beautiful like lip gloss stick. That's kind of like what I get from it. I kind of want to apply one right now. This is the shade Dahlia. They are so just like, I feel like you don't have to worry about them. They apply so easily. I like that they're really thin and they are just so comfortable on the lips. My favorite shade is the shade Lily, which is the most like neutral out of the bunch. I mean, that is like the most perfect shade ever. Definitely something I would consider purchasing again when I finish, especially the shade Lily. This I can see being like my on the go lip product throughout the summer because it offers such a beautiful like sheer peachy pinkness to the lips and the sheer beautiful glossy glow I, these are really good you guys i'm a huge fan a couple of products i am not a huge fan of um the kosas air brow is that what this is um i got this in like a holiday set and i had gone through a little mini size of this in the past and didn't think i like it and now trying it in the full size i can confirm i do not think this is a good eyebrow product i don't think it has really much hold at all it's literally just like a clear brow gel that i feel like just adds wetness to your eyebrows that like then like dries down and kind of almost looks like dandruff in your eyebrows. That's kind of what I get from this. I don't think it's a good product. It's something I would, it's something I'm considering decluttering. Not a fan of that. I will also say these are definitely not going to turn into favorites. And I should have known that going into purchasing and it's no fault of the product. It's my fault for not staying true to knowing myself and knowing that these types of products are just not products that I reach for every day. So these are the about face eye paints and I have one matte version and one like glitter version. The matte version I have is in the shade smell before rain. This is actually like significantly more cool toned than I thought it was gonna be. And this actually is really nice. There it is right there. Just for like an everyday, like if I just want like this in the crease, that would be great. But that is just not my makeup aesthetic. I love to go heavy on the eyes. I like to sparkle and things like that. So maybe I'll change my mind on this if we get to like summer and I'm reaching for this all the time, but it's just not a product that I personally reach for. I will say it's incredibly long lasting. It's a great product, especially if this is the type of product you personally reach for. It's just not, it's not my makeup aesthetic. It's not my vibe. And then here is the sparkly one. And this is quite sparkly. I will say it is quite stark and I don't love this one because it's just so stark on the eyes. But again, it has this really, really beautiful sparkly shift to it. So I think like you could really love this. I do need to get more more uses out of this, but it's just, it's not a product for me. I'm, I'm struggling to motivate myself to reach for it. Again, really good tack though. Like this is not coming off after I set it down. Again, just not the type of product I'm reaching for on a frequent basis at all and then speaking of that type of product kaja sent over all six of their newest like eyeshadow sticks and what's unique about these is on one end oops that's the wrong end on one end you have like a uh cream crayon i'll say and then on the other end you have this like very beautiful like glitter sparkle on this sponge tip and Okay, I will say I'm not, it's so pretty. 
like that sparkle is so pretty i'm not a huge fan of just the cream shadow on its own i will say it does have really good staying power though like it does not budge once you get it down again not my everyday sort of product just not the type of product i personally am reaching for on a frequent basis i do really like it topped with the sparkly like second half of this product though my only gripe with that though is you like literally have to like dig in and it's not like the easiest product to pick up you're constantly having to dip back in but once you get it on the eyes it is really beautiful and sparkly if you don't like a sparkly lid like you're not gonna like that i do like that aspect to it do i see myself getting a ton of use out of these no but they're fun they're fun and if you like a product like this i think you would enjoy this i don't necessarily think and i'm not super well versed in cream eyeshadow sticks so i'm not really the one to really have an opinion i don't think that these would be people's like tippy top favorites okay and then the last few products i have i have two more products out of my beautylish lucky bag so i have the hindash liquid liner this is so good this is one of the best if not the best black liquid liner i've ever tried the tip on this is comes to such a fine point which i really appreciate especially because i have more hooded hooded lids so sometimes i just feel like when i'm trying to tight line it's like my lid disappears because i get the line so thick so i've been a huge fan of this i 100 percent would spend i think it's 26 dollars for the full like full price i would repurchase at that at that full price I also got the Natasha Denona Pastel Glow Highlighter in my Beautylish Lucky Bag. And this is really pretty. I'm glad that I didn't like, I don't want to say like buy this with my own money because like I did spend my own money on the Beautylish Lucky Bag. But this is definitely not going to be my personal top choice as a highlighter. It definitely is more of a gold highlight where I prefer something that's either more like champagne, even though it's kind of like a gold champagne, or a pink is my favorite type of highlight. I still think this is pretty and it's not as blinding as I thought it was going to be, especially on a fluffier brush. It really does give this like glassy skin sort of glow. So I think it's pretty. If you like a more golden tone highlight, I think you might really like this one. It's just not going to be a favorite highlight in my collection. I did forget to mention I also purchased the Revolution Sport Fix Lasting Hold Fixing Spray. I've really been enjoying this, especially for an $8 spray. I feel like this does make my makeup last longer. And honestly, I don't feel like I ever have the need to purchase the Urban Decay All Nighter Spray again. I feel like there's other less expensive holding sprays that do prolong the wear of my makeup that come in at a lower price point. So I think I've officially moved on from the Urban Decay All Nighter. I'm gonna spray a little bit of this on my face too, just cause well, mostly I feel like misting my face. I don't feel like this gives like a super matte finish, which is something I enjoy, but I do feel like it prolongs the wear of my makeup and $8. Like I feel like you can't beat that. Okay, I have to put some more lip gloss, you guys. <laughs> the other day, my daughter put on some of this Tarte Man Eater lip gloss and I didn't know she was doing it. And all of a sudden she comes running up to me and she's like, oh, my lips, my lips, mom, they're literally burning. They are burning. And she's like starting to cry. And I'm like laughing just a little bit because I'm like, girl, this is why you don't take my makeup without like asking me first. And so we wiped it off and she was fine. But I was laughing. She's like, mom, that's not funny. And I was like, it's a little funny. Okay, the last three products to talk about are all foundations. Let's start with my favorite of the three. I have the Fenty Beauty ease drop blur smooth tint stick this is really beautiful especially on days that i'm wanting a lighter coverage foundation i can see this being my go-to foundation this summer um it is truly so easy to blend um it glides right on the skin and it blends out so easily which i don't feel like can always be said for a stick foundation my only concern with this that i in my head i feel like i haven't used it the most but already i've used like that amount of product so i'm like well i feel like this is just gonna like empty out super quickly but i still think it's beautiful and so far as of right now i would say it's something i would repurchase after finishing if i'm consistently using it every day this spring summer and i like fly through it maybe i'll change my mind like if i go through it too quickly or if i'm just absolutely loving it maybe i'll keep with the same opinion but as of right now i think this is absolutely beautiful it's not going to give you much more than like light teetering on medium but not really coverage so if you're someone who likes more medium to full this is not going to work for you but especially for on the go or travel i think this is a great product okay the second best foundation but like 
wouldn't repurchase. For me personally, I don't feel like this is the best for my skin type, which we've established in this video is dry. This is from Juvia's Place. It's the I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation. So I thought maybe I would really enjoy this because it has the word radiance in it. And I'm definitely someone who prefers like a skin-like leaning, like leaning, I almost said sparkly and that's not, I don't want a sparkly face, leaning healthy glow sort of finish. This is just a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than I personally prefer. As we were talking about like getting into bed earlier, like I do like my thickness in like other aspects of my life, but like thickness with my foundation is just not something I personally am a fan of. So I found this just to be a little bit heavier than I prefer. It's something I still can see myself being able to use this bottle. And I did like it mixed with like a little bit of, um, Oh my gosh, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter because I don't feel like this is super radiant. Like I don't feel like this has much of a radiance to it personally. Um, just too heavy for me. Maybe I was over applying it. I honestly don't know, but that just wasn't a favorite. And then a foundation that just is not gonna work out for me and it makes me sad, but like get me as far away from this as possible. And this truly is, I think, because of my skin type, but it's the newest from Bare Minerals. It's the Bare Pro 24 Hour Wear Skin Perfecting Matte Liquid Foundation. So they did send this over to me and I was so excited to try a liquid foundation from Bare Minerals. This, no matter how I applied this or prepped my skin, about four hours into wearing this, my skin looked like a dry cakey lizard flaking just like the like it was clinging to dry patches it was like breaking up onto my dry patches almost like it was almost as though my pores were like confusing this for hydration so they were like trying to like suck in the foundation and it just le left me look like i imagine like a hard desert like sandy floor that's like cracking up that's like what my face looked like it wasn't pretty i really tried i really tried i wore this to work like days in a row i think i did four days in a row at work and then also did a couple of weekend days and i told my work peers i was like please forgive me for the state of my skin i need to just figure out if this foundation is for me i need to try it different ways i would like ultra hydrate my skin in the morning i would miss the heck out of it and just this is not for me if you have oily skin though, this might be for you. I can't say I'm definitely not an expert on oily skin for even like a moment in my life, but for dry skin girlies, I don't think this one is gonna be for you. Woo! After that, you guys, those are all of the most recent products that have come into my collection that I have tried. I would love to know in the comments below what products are you loving right now? What products are you not loving? Let a girl know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you so much for sticking around to watch today's video and for supporting me and my channel as you guys always do. I love you guys so much and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.